Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, well, I think it's about time to get on with the plasma flame generator. Now, if you remember in the previous video, we did get some outputs. No flame or anything like that, but proved it did oscillate. So anyway, I've been doing a little more tinkering with this. You may have noticed that I have rewound the primary coil. With the primary coil like this, and the variable capacitor set to um, 100 picofarads, I do get a perfect 10 megahertz oscillation. So, I'm a little bit worried about using one of these capacitors as my um, feedback capacitor. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make a capacitor. I have some foil tape here, and a few sheets of plastic that I've cut from an old box. And to save time, I've already started with this one here. So we've got foil on one side, and plastic being used as the electrolytes. Foil on the other side, making sure of course that they do not touch each other and do not short circuit. So I'm going to measure what I've got so far, and just to see how many picofarads this is. So I've got my trusty LC meter here. Let's see what we got so far. So I'm just going to attach one lead onto one of the plates here. Let's just zero that out. So we don't get a false reading. And connect the lead to the other lead. I mean, the other lead to the other plate. And we have... Ah, oh, look at that. That's a lot higher than I thought it would be. We're already at 62 picofarads. So this is how my DIY capacitor is going to go together. So you've already seen this bit. Now I've got two other bits here. One with just one piece of foil on it, and another one with just one piece of foil on it. It's going to go together like this. So that's going to go on the top of that like that, and don't want to get these stuck together just yet. The other one's going to go under it like that. So we have a multi-layer capacitor. Now I'm going to need to tweak this to get it to 100 picofarads. Actually, I think I will put it together. Just to see what kind of capacitance we have. I can always disassemble this and put it together properly later. So that's that side on. And let's stick this side on. Just trying to get that nice and neat. Right, there we go. So here is my DIY multi-layer capacitor. I have no idea what the capacitance actually is, so let's give it a little measure. Let's make sure that clip is making contact with both pieces of foil tape. Let's make sure this is zeroed out. We'll do the same for the other side. Now we're just over 100 picofarads. Now if I squeeze that together, I'm trying to find something that's not conductive, that will go up. So that's something I've got to be concerned, uh, that's something I've got to concern myself with. Anyway, I've got to um, tweak this capacitor and get it to the right... Um, capacitance and I'll be back when that's done. Well I think that's working pretty well. As you can see I've put tape around it to make it nice and um, keep it all together. Even though I have glued the thing together. Just want that extra amount of um, keeping it togetherness if that's even a word. Yeah as you can see pretty much right on it there. Okay it's a little tiny teeny weeny weeny bit off but I don't really think that's gonna matter. Okay, well, this all seems to be working. So I'm just going to be using the two batteries in this little test. Go over to the scope here. I've got the scope probe 
Right next to the coil there. Next to the crocodile clip. Turn this on. Power this up. I'll just get it in there. Let's see, we've got a nice 10 megahertz. So that's working good. So the only thing left to do is to, well, redo this coil and get this to 10 megahertz as well. Okay, so I have rewound my output coil. This has 150 turns on it. I don't know how many turns the original schematic specified. I think it was 170 turns. Anyway, let's just see what the resonant frequency of this is. So, on the oscilloscope, you can see two traces. The yellow trace is coming straight out of this, and the blue trace is on the coil itself. Turn that on. Oh yeah, better turn the other, turn the amplifier on as well. All right, so according to the scope, we're about 6.017 megahertz, and according to my scope, 10.439 megahertz is the frequency that my circuit runs at. So let's see what our coil is at. So I'm going to start winding up the frequency. See if we get a dip anywhere. Oh, yeah, there we go, there's a dip right about there. That's about 6.9 megahertz. Okay. Now, if I put my hand near this coil, I'll just see if that... Yep. As I put my hand near the coil, you can see the amplitude increases. Just that tiny little amount of capacitance between my hand and the coil. That's just enough to detune it. Right, I'm going to put a screw on here. So we're at 6.9 megahertz at the moment. So touch a screw onto this and let's see what that does to our frequency. Okay, let's just turn it down a little bit and. So our resonant frequency now is about 6.86. So I've got to take quite a few turns off this coil to get it up to the 10.439 um, megahertz, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up for today. So, as you can see, I have rewound my secondary coil. So this is now a 10 megahertz coil. Still not working how I wanted it to. Let's just give it a little power up. As you can see, we are getting output there. As indicated by the CFL bulb. Let's just see if it lights up in the primary. And indeed it does. However, I'm not getting much output. So this is about 14 volts AC going into the rectifier and then into the circuit. It's not doing anything. Let's step that up to about 24 volts or 27 volts. I'm not exactly sure what the output voltage of this transformer is. So you're just not getting anything. So, I'm going to take this screw out. I can do this one-handed. Just using my old camera here because this has autofocus. Okay. Now with the screw off, we do get something. So this is at about 24 volts input. You can see we are getting a little output there. With a little smoke coming off the wire. This is burning off the enamel. Now I was not getting that with the screw. Okay, we'll go back to the 14 volt output and let's see what the scope says. Now it says it's only about 2.8 megahertz. Let me just adjust the bias a little bit. 
They'll probably shriek now, but... Now it says it's about 5 megahertz. Thing is, there's a lot of AC ripple in the output, I'm just... I think that's throwing off the scope's reading, so I don't actually know what frequency this is actually running at. Okay, well just before I go, time for a little bit of battery abuse. So, I'm going to power this circuit up from these two little 9 volt batteries. That way there's going to be no ripple in the power. So, we should be able to see exactly what frequency this is running at. We've got the scope set up and ready to measure, just with crocodile clip loosely connected to the scope's lead, so... Let's see what frequency this is actually running out, if there's still enough juice left in these batteries, of course. And, uh, yeah. well, according to that, it's running at about 11.15 megahertz. So, I think maybe just adding a few extra turns to that coil might sort it out. Okay, so this is with the screw on the end of the coil. Let's see what our frequency is now. Alright, still a little bit high. So yeah, I think I might have taken a few turns too many off this primary, I mean this secondary. Although it was 10 megahertz when I did the thing with the frequency, um, yeah, signal generators, so... Yeah, I think that might be a problem. Anyway, I'm going to end this video now. Try and see if I can get this working. So, until next time, goodbye.